Hi, everybody. Welcome inside Inside Investigations. We talk about the show you just watched, and this is the RV charges story. Joe, you were the senior investigator on this. How did it start? Dale, we, you know, we get emails and phone calls all the time from people, and this one was simply just an email telling us uh, we've been robbed from our RV and would like for you to help us catch the person and uh, not even so much catch the person, but just kind of bring light to this situation because people are kind of dragging their feet. Co so one of the really cool things about being an investigator is when you get a story that has not one great element, not two great elements, but three great elements. And so you've got a robbery, and that's pretty common, or an alleged robbery, uh, a burglary, I should say. Right. And then all of a sudden you find out that there is a surveillance camera inside this RV, and it goes to another level. What's that? Yeah, all right, well, as you mentioned, there's, there's video, which, you know, we're television. So if there's video, we're more likely to do the story. It's unfortunate, but that's the way TV works. So uh, there's video inside this RV, as, as everyone has seen, uh, where they're snooping and snooping around. So we asked the uh, defendants in this case, what was going on? Why were you snooping so much? And they uh, said, well, we're always curious. We've been in hundreds of RVs. But this one had just had some peculiar items around that we were just kind of curious about. and so. We just wanted to check it out, as they said. And um, that's pretty much their defense, that they weren't stealing anything. They were just curious. OK, so it goes to level two when one of the defendants is on camera, on his cell phone, talking to his boss, who has just been called by the client, saying, your guys are inside my RV going through my stuff. And you see this defendant say, I ain't going to do nothing. I'm just turning the water off. Six minutes. That's hard. Yeah, that's a pretty unusual situation. Yeah, they through their their phone app, they were able to see their security inside their RV, which is rare. I mean, most people I don't believe have video cameras inside their RV, but through real time, they were able to call up the RV company and say, "We see your employees going through our RV. They need to get out of there and stop snooping." And and, and if you caught the story, <laughs> there was no purpose in being inside the RV because the water heater that they were replacing is accessed on the outside of the RV. Yes and no. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the defendants say, we did have to go inside there. We do have to check a line. We can't just do it all outside. And we did have to go inside. We're, and, and, you know, I told him, I said, you know, just looking at the video, come on, you guys, you look guilty. <laughs> I mean, just anybody, a jury or anybody, if you're just looking at this thing, you're like, y'all are going through every drawer. And they, they admit, like, yeah, we know what it looks like. It looks bad, but just because we're looking doesn't mean we stole anything. Yeah. Okay, so level three. Level three is then when we went to the RV headquarters and talked to the owner of the RV company, and he went on camera with us and said he was not firing these two guys after they've been charged. No. And do you remember why he said he wasn't firing them? The quote was, I wrote them up. Like, like a principal of the, of the middle school saying, uh, that's going to go on their record. These guys shouldn't be doing that. It's not really, uh, it's not justice <laughs> to the victims, perhaps. But, uh, you know, the victims, or they call themselves victims because there's no proof that we've seen that things were stolen. You know, the, the defendants say, you know, I can't help it that they're saying that things are missing. You know, they say, well, maybe they're just trying to collect insurance money. And so we have to be careful in what we report because, you know, on the surface, it looks like they're guilty as heck, but you never know. <laughs> as their boss said, you're innocent until you're proven guilty. That's why they're still employed, except, as we all know now, too, that uh, they're not, one of them has left. He said the stress of this situation was just a lot, so he took off. Okay, and so then it, it goes to another level because we discovered that this RV repair company services hundreds of RVs across the southeast and they have pass keys mm -hmm. to hundreds of RVs and because a lot of people don't live in their RVs they vacation in their RVs there could be things allegedly missing from dozens and dozens of RVs that people just simply haven't discovered yet or simply thought well I thought I brought it up here but it's not here that's accurate and uh, apparently there's some sort of master key that can open most RVs and I guess it's kind of a trust thing, you know, not to blame victims, but people always say, well, you shouldn't leave valuables in your RV. That's your fault. 
but mm. right. I mean, you know, that's one defense I hear sometimes. And uh, you know, do you trust someone knowing that there's an RV key that can get into everybody's RV and all these lots? I wouldn't. You know, I. And that's really important, Joe. That's part of why we do what we do because you learn something, I learn something. Yeah. You know, I didn't know there was a master key for most RVs. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to level five. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and level five, the defendant did an interview with you. Yeah, it's always, um, when you approach someone for this story, for any story, it's always kind of awkward because you got to play nice. You know, you're not, you don't want to think you're out to get him because you do want to present this fairly as we always do. And I did not expect him to agree to chat with us. <laughs> and he did. And uh, I'm glad he did. He got to share his side of the story and his defense. Um, it might end up going to a jury, um, which he says he's well prepared for, although he's also saying it's expensive to maintain his, uh, his defense attorney and he's spending a lot of money on it. But um, yeah, he, sp he spoke with us and uh, I'm glad he did. Yeah, and so this, who knows when people are watching this, but then COVID hits mm -hmm. and it delays everything. And for uh, the people that are checking this out, we have a ton of different stories that are in some at a point of judicial process that are frozen. And what's yeah. stunning is to see people, not necessarily these guys, but see people who have been charged with crimes uh, released, and then they go back to doing exactly what, they were doing exactly what they were accused of doing. And it's like, where's, where's justice? It's a good point. Yeah, it, it is awkward, you know, without, with the court systems closed, you know, people aren't sitting behind jail or you're behind bars right now and they're, you know, still working at an RV place, whether if he's guilty, then that's certainly terrible that he's still working. Uh, but, you know, as he mentioned, why would he want to ruin his career? He's been doing this forever. You know, he's got a family. Um, he wouldn't do this. Um, the people that brought us the video, the Merricks, they, uh, they see this quite differently. They're like, I can't believe he's still out there working for the same company, still finding perhaps potential other victims, as you mentioned, that may not even be aware that they are victims. So you and I have been working together for about 10 years, more than 10 years. On, on your level of stories <laughs> that we've worked on, where does this one rank? This is pretty good. You know, it's, it's got, as you say, all the levels, all the elements of a, of a crazy story, and there's video. You know, typically camera crews or news stories respond after an event and try and you know you see recreations here we can see in real time the video of things and there's a lot of uh, back and forth why this crime is committed why they were snooping and it's it's humorous but it's also serious you know it was a, a diamond ring that she says belonged to her I believe her mother and um, you hope they find it um, but on the other hand yeah this is a this is a weird one this is our version of Tiger King <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's just absurd. Yeah, there's a there's a lifestyle of RV living that I was not familiar with. <laughs> North Georgia mountains is where this occurred, and um, it's something I wasn't familiar with. And there's a different type of people, and you know, that enjoy the freedom of being in their RVs, but it's also a whole culture. I mean, you know, the different types of campgrounds, or different types of people who enjoy RVs. You know, some of them are just snowbirds some of them are vacationers some of them have a lot more fun with other things and yeah it is it is it's a good example yeah it's as a journalist you love the stories that go beep 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 and that and this one definitely did that uh, you know i i could put this in a handful maybe 10 stories that i've done in my career that took really really odd weird turns and and became more interesting because of it and that's why when we posted this on social media it, it took off, you know, people just curious to learn about another type of crime. It's not just your, oh, someone was robbed, here's the story. I mean, that's every day on the nightly news. But in this case, yeah, it's a whole other world out there of people and scenarios that I'm learning about. We, we have a title for this. We call it, You Can't Make This Beep Up. <laughs> Great work, Joe. Very good. Thanks, Dale. All right.